Hey, super scientists, we're going to go ahead and get started with your ecosystems EOG review. We're going to quickly review through the key concepts. Now, remember, this is not every single thing that we learned throughout the school year, but it is the main important concepts. So we're going to start off with a carbon cycle. So sources of carbon are going to be humans breathing out carbon dioxide, animals also breathing out carbon dioxide, and both of those will occur through the process of cellular respiration as a product and the burning of fossil fuels. So the burning of fossil fuels adds way too much rampant carbon dioxide to the atmosphere, which leads to global warming, which is sometimes used interchangeably with climate change, but it's not exactly the same thing though. Second question, what uses carbon? Things that are gonna go through photosynthesis. So that would be plants, cyanobacteria, algae, euglena, volvox, so anything that is gonna be photosynthetic. Number three, impacts of humans. So humans are gonna add way too much carbon dioxide to the air through the burning of fossil fuels, but also humans are going to add naturally carbon dioxide. And that amount that's added from respiration, just from breathing out, is not gonna be too much carbon dioxide. It's, it naturally occurs, but the burning of fossil fuels is what adds way, way too much carbon dioxide. Number four, what do fossil fuels have to do with the carbon cycle? So burning fossil fuels, for cars, electricity, that's going to add that excess of carbon dioxide to the atmosphere. The next cycle of matter is oxygen cycle. So sources of oxygen are going to be plants, algae, phytoplankton, things that are photosynthetic. So the things that are photosynthetic are going to go through um, this process and then as a product will release oxygen. And what's going to use oxygen? So after the plants and photosynthetic stuff has released the oxygen, people and animals are going to breathe in the oxygen and will go through the process of respiration. And the nitrogen cycle. Where does nitrogen come from? Well, there's nitrogen naturally in the atmosphere. The atmosphere is mostly made of nitrogen. And organic matter that is decomposing is going to release nitrogen and that will go into the air and some will go into the soil as well. Plants are going to use nitrogen to make proteins and proteins are necessary for cell growth and repair of tissue. Nitrogen fixation is where the bacteria, the nitrogen fixing bacteria like rhizobia will be in that symbiotic relationship with legume plants and so they will live in the or around the roots or the root nodules on those legume plants and so the bacteria will convert ni the nitrogen from the atmosphere which is N2 into um, ammonia NH3 which is a usable form of nitrogen. Number 10 what are two things that fix nitrogen? Um, bacteria on the legumes do and then also lightning is the other example. So the bacteria that live symbiotically with the legumes and then the second thing that fixes nitrogen is lightning. And number 11, what are legumes? Plants that have bacteria on their roots that will fix nitrogen. So the plants are going to be like beans and peas, soybeans, peanuts. Water cycle. 12, evaporation is where the liquid water gets so hot and the molecules are moving so fast that they turn from a liquid to a gas and that gas is called water vapor. 13 condensation is where water vapor, which is a gas, cools down so the molecules start moving slower and they turn from a gas to liquid and if that happens around condensation nuclei, around dust particles that will form clouds, precipitation is water that's falling from the clouds, rain, sleet, snow, or hail, and transpiration is evaporation from plant leaves. So that water vapor, that gaseous water vapor, is released from the stomata, those little holes on the underside of the leaves. So ecosystem limiting factors, we talked about abiotic factors and biotic factors. Abiotic factors are the non-living things in the ecosystem. So that would be things like the air, rocks, water. Biotic factors are going to be the things that are alive, the living organisms, animals, plants, and also the well, bacteria and fungi, other um, organisms too that are alive, but also the symbiotic relationships between those organisms as well. So parasitism and um, predation would be another example, competition. So how those organisms interact with one another. Population dependent limiting factors are going to be limiting factors that affect a particular um, species depending on the population size. And an example of that would be disease. So if you have a disease, 
um, that is infectious, it will go through more densely populated areas really quickly. Like New York City, for example, has a lot of people and there's a lot of people that are in contact with one another constantly. And so that will allow for an infectious disease to spread really quickly. Whereas an area that's very rural, like in Montana, where you may not, um, you may be a couple miles away from your nearest neighbor, you're not going to be in contact with um, a bunch of people as readily as you would in a city. Population independent limiting factors are going to affect the population regardless of the population size. So the size of the population does not matter. Weather is an, a great example of that. So tornadoes, um, natural disasters, tsunamis, things like that, if they're going to happen, they're going to happen, and it doesn't matter. Um, it can't be attributed to the population size. It's just going to happen naturally, and it may impact uh, one or two living organisms, or it may impact a whole bunch of them. And the last thing is symbiotic relationships. So symbiosis is interaction between two living things, so a particular relationship between two living organisms. Parasitism is where one organism benefits, and that would be the parasite, and the other one is harmed, so that would be the host. Botfly is one of my favorite examples. A tick is another example. So in the example of a tick, a tick would be the parasite that benefits, and then a person or a dog would be the host that gets harmed. Commensalism is where one organism benefits and the other doesn't care. The other one is unaffected. It isn't helped. It isn't harmed. Sharks and um, pilot fish or remora, uh, those are some examples. And mutualism, both organisms are going to benefit, so that's two smiley faces. Nemo, the clownfish, and sea anemone, that's another example. The oxpecker bird and zebra, the oxpecker bird is going to um, eat the little mites and bugs and stuff off of the zebra, and the zebra likes that because it's not covered in bugs. 